the rising need for agriculture to mass produce food on an international scale, researchers and scientists alike have been looking for ways to maximize areas to propagate crops. Since farming takes up a lot of land area, they've turned to stacking one plant after another, which led to what is now popularly known as vertical farming. But that's not all there is to this innovation. And is vertical farming the future and the solution to our world's food scarcity problem? Find out more in today's video. So what is vertical farming? From the name itself, vertical farming is the practice of producing crops on vertical surfaces instead of planting them on the ground. The term was first coined by Gilbert Ellis Bailey, an American geologist back in 1915, but it was Dickinson Das Pommier who introduced the modern concept of vertical farming in 1999. Das Pommier was a professor at Columbia University New York, where he and his students came up with designing a skyscraper that could cater food that was good enough for 50,000 people. In the last few decades, researchers and agronomists are pushing for the creation of more high-rise structures dedicated to vertical farming. And the reason? More than half of the Earth's topsoil has been lost in the last 150 years, according to the World Wildlife Fund, WWF, in a process called land degradation. It's both a natural and man-made event that's been the result of a combination of droughts, pollution, and over-farming. That's not the only problem we will be facing since the world's population is expected to blow up to 9.7 billion people by 2050, according to the United Nations. What do we need to know about vertical farming in practice? Fortunately, we as humans are eternally curious and are dedicated to finding better ways of living, which brought about the innovation of agritech, combining agriculture with technology technology to not only make plants more sustainable and healthy through genetic modification, but also make tasks easier to accomplish for humans as well. Incorporating artificial intelligence drone technology into pieces of equipment was revolutionary and also aided in traditional tasks. The recent pandemic outbreak crippled our already struggling food sources, and we also discovered that there are a lot of countries that are highly dependent on other nations to provide products. Some countries are the leading forces in food supplies and some are maximizing vertical farming within their lands. One such country it's known for practicing vertical farming is Singapore, a pretty impressive feat considering it's one of the smallest countries in the world and a portion of its land is attained through reclamation, which they still do to this day. With a limited land mass, they've no choice but to adopt the practice of vertical farming indoors. Instead of farming outdoors, they devised a system that enabled them to plant indoors and stack them vertically to save more space and also to maximize the air area for other crops. The country even has a plan to increase food production by 30% by 2020, which we think is pretty doable on their part considering how much they achieved together. Several farms, which include Artisan Green and Sustainer Agriculture, are already practicing indoor farming by producing herbs and salad leaves on various buildings within the city. But there are also others, such as the Indoor Farm Factory Innovation, who are focused on improving their current technology into something much better. Some of their improved technologies include environmental monitoring, optimized water treatment to improve crop yield and quality, customized LED lighting for cultivating a range of crops, and futuristic robotic systems and AI automation that simplify the farming processes. What are the advantages of practicing vertical farming? There are a couple of reasons why more and more companies and farms are turning to vertical farming, which mainly includes the following. First is better use of space. For obvious reasons, vertical farming uses is less space compared to traditional farming. And that's not all there is to it since you have to prep the soil and make it a fertile area for your crops to grow and survive. Vertical farms, on the other hand, can be built no matter where the area or climate may be, and it's also irrespective of temperature extremes and weather conditions since crops will be grown in a controlled environment. The stacking system is also pretty handy and leaves more room for movement or development in other areas. You just need to expand and upwards if you plan on increasing crop production, given that you've allocated space for expansion. Depending on what type of crop you'll grow, a one acre farm could yield produce that's equivalent to between 10 or 20 soil-based acres if it's grown consistently. Next, vertical farming is energy efficient. In traditional farming, tilling and preparing the land for produce takes a lot of effort and time, which means it also exerts a lot of resources to do so. LED lighting is a key component in growing crops since they require a certain amount to grow bountifully. So generating power for these lights is also a crucial process
process, but scientists and researchers also found a way for vertical farmers to generate power, making it energy efficient. Cambridge HOK specializes in renewable technologies and combined heat and power CHP solutions, which can harness excess energy to be reused elsewhere in your business or transferred back to the national grid. And it's environmentally friendly. Another reason why more people are investing in vertical farming is that it's environmentally friendly. As said earlier, soil prep alone involves a lot of processes that use various pieces of equipment, most of which emit CO2 that contributes to the already troubling climate problem. We're not saying indoor farming doesn't use fossil fuels, but compared to traditional farming, it uses lesser fossil fuels to operate machinery and various equipment. Not only that, but it also aids in improving biodiversity by not disrupting land surface and helps the natural animal population to thrive freely around farms. Up next, vertical farming maximizes water usage. Vertical farming not only lessens the use of fossil fuels since it's also minimizing water usage. A popular way to grow a crop that uses a small amount of water is hydroponics. This method of plant growth does not use soil where you can produce all year long and only utilizes about 10% of the amount of water. And as a result, the nutrients and fertilizers compared to traditional methods. Since the water is clean after use, it can be reused and recycled, which reduces costs and minimizes waste. Although there are some disadvantages to adapting hydroponics since it's costly to set up and it's also vulnerable to power outages, you also have to closely monitor and maintain your crops since waterborne diseases may creep in and cause problems that may affect the plants. Year-round production of crops is possible. Next, production is not dependent on weather conditions. Since the plants are grown inside an encased and controlled environment, you don't have to worry about the weather and how it affects the crop. Compared to traditional farming where you have to monitor the weather regularly and keep tabs, vertical farming bypasses this concern, which could save you costs from weathering equipment or machinery. And you won't have to worry if the crop will get destroyed in bad weather. And you could grow produce without relying on chemicals and pesticides. When it comes to produce, of course, consumers prefer the products they consume to be as clean of any chemicals and pesticides as possible for healthier and safer consumption. Having pests is not uncommon if you're farming traditionally, but growing food on a vertical farm decreases your chance of acquiring pests. You may even eliminate it altogether given the right control since pests and other animals cannot enter a controlled environment to cause crop damage. In addition to that, fungal diseases also struggle to gain a foothold as humidity levels are managed. You can also reduce transport costs. We know for a fact how expensive food production is, but a large portion of that cost stems from the last mile delivery, since it's pretty common for produce to be packed and shipped to different parts of the world. Being able to grow crops in a location where a consumer lives near is a great benefit for the company since it greatly reduces transportation costs and CO2 emissions as well. Finally, the biggest farming benefit of vertical farming is that farmers and companies can grow crops all year round, which is great for business. For traditional farming, farmers always need to consider weather conditions, since it has a significant effect on the overall crop production in a single year. If you're located in an area that's frequented by typhoons, floods, or natural disasters, then your chances of yielding a bountiful crop yearly are pretty slim. Since vertical farms are planted in a well-monitored environment with controlled variables, it brings peace of mind to growers knowing their produce won't suffer from natural disasters. In addition to that, growers can also reduce harvest times and improve volume without compromising on flavor or quality, which always remains 100% consistent. This is an ideal situation, especially with the growing supply and demand for products across the world lately. In today's time, which looks at maximizing whatever sources we have, but also being mindful of our environment, we're pretty sure vertical farming is the future of food production. Unfortunately, we've run out of time as much as we'd like to discuss more. With that, we're ending today's video about vertical farming. Is your respective country already practicing vertical farming? Let us know in the comments below. Before you go, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on. See you next time and thanks for watching.